Hey Lauren, this is a video response to the art that you sent me from Olivia. So the first thing we see is a blue uh, person or face, and the blue face uh, is in the place where it would be like her frontal lobe would be, right? Like her frontal lobe is represented by like this part of the drawing, and then it kind of goes down right here. Uh, interestingly enough, this is where her amygdala is, and uh, these are her, her eyes, and so there's this color of blue. If you ever hear of artists entering their blue period, uh, it is a place where uh, usually after an artist's mother's died, they'll go into it. If you look at the uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, if they wanted to represent something as dead, they would put uh, that color of blue on the face. Uh, it's actually a little bit brighter than I would prefer to, to definitely call it as the Egyptian color of dead, but it's blue enough to where uh, I'm convinced that there's something that is sad and dying. And if you look at the face over here, the face is experiencing shame, right? This is blush that's on the little face. And so the body's flushing, and there's some sort of shame that is about... Now, it's the green right here, green is like the original life of God that she was given, right? And so green represents something growing. So there's some way that she's growing, that's the way she was designed to grow, that is causing her shame and is making her feel blue. Now, because of the way she colored, she didn't scribble randomly, which we know she could scribble randomly. She scribbled very very laterally and then very horizontally or laterally then hor whatever you want to call it and so i would say that there's some sort of structure that's causing her to be upset and so i i don't know if the structure is like like school would be an example of structure or society the thing that society is doing and they're expecting of us or the rules right so uh, some of that's probably normal for a kid to feel that way, but we're having such an extreme response that we've got to look at the different things going on. So that's the explanation of that. This would be the place where she looks forward to her future. And so if you see, there is three black boxes that extend to off the, I mean, this is the most optimistic part of the drawing. Like what you really want to see is like a real like nice gold or yellow or uh, a very calm color of blue, which would be a brighter, like a more blue blue, uh, like a navier blue. And that's really what you'd want to see is calm, hopefulness, uh, assertiveness. And so there's something that she's looking to in her future that seems very empty to her in this moment. Now, I don't know what this is. I suspect it's a crown of some sort, which a crown typically is the same as like a scepter, and it talks about like authority and the authorization to do things. And so because this is black, uh, it could be nothing, but because of the shape of it and all of those things, and the fact that it's associated with the other one, I would say there's some authority that's been bestowed upon whatever this is that's causing her, causing her to feel these things, right? And so then we have something that's blue and kind of dead over here that is also very unhappy. And I don't know what that is just yet. There's about a million theories. Uh, I don't know if a disappearing twin is possible, if Olivia might have had a twin, or there's something going on with that. And so uh, as far as the writing and things, uh, the fact that some of it came up backwards is very indicative of uh, uh, masons, witchcraft, things like that. The backwards writing is all very common, especially in witchcraft. Uh, one of the things that they say is, as above, so below. And they don't mean as above, so below. What they mean is the things above, if you look at it in a mirror, are actually the complete opposite of the way they should be. Uh, in God's kingdom, we're taught that uh, if one of us has to suffer, let it be me, right? And that's the example of Jesus on the cross. And uh, in Luciferianism, uh, the, the, the main goal or tenet is do as thou will, that at the end of the whole walk, one of us has to suffer, let it be you, right? And so I thought, well, maybe this is some sort of a being that was given authorization to operate from your trip to Sedona. But Olivia's subconscious is so powerful that she knew I would think that, and... She said, nope, Texas. And Texas is in the same color of blue, which means her home in Texas is a sad place to her right now. These are just feelings. Uh, if I was a little kid and I was trying to write something demonic, I would draw a face just like that. In fact, that face and those lines are so sophisticated that I don't think those came from Olivia's soul. And so uh, 
that is typically uh, associated with the part of the brain that does, uh, uh, well, hold on, let me get back to you. It's the occipital lobe. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get back to you on that. I'll send you a text about that. And I don't know what OAA represents. And I don't know what this is. But if you remember, we saw three over here. And so I would imagine that these three uh, are somehow connected to that. And I looked for to see if there was anything overlaid. I turned down the opacity in between the two. But I don't see any direct connection. So I think these are independent thoughts. Normally, if there's a, like a, if they need a second drawing to really express what's going on in the first, they'll overlay at least somewhat perfectly. But I couldn't find any real overlap. Uh, so uh, I do think there's an element of demonic going on. Uh, I do think that because the demonic is connected to the backwards writing. And this would be in the place where, uh, like, the brainstem would be, uh, the things that, like, ground you to your body. And so then there's some way, and I would assume this is Libby's soul over here. This is how she feels on the inside. There's some relationship, not a complete relationship because it's not connected, but there's some relationship just based on the color of this backwards writing, which could be uh, Masonic, it could be witchcraft. Sometimes there's, like, actual witches and things connected to this and this and this. This is one complete sentence right here. So everything in here is overlaid uh, with meaning. And so that is what I have. And uh, I hope this helps you on your journey. And I hope she keeps doing stuff. Uh, sometimes whenever she turns one out like this, it's good to have an abstract color afterwards. And usually the abstract color, when they just start laying down colors, will correspond perfectly. And it provides like a second sentence of the same thing. So that would be good sometimes too. But that's what I got for you.